Good morning guys, Scott Wells here with Veteran Caregivers bringing awareness about the aid and attendance pension for senior veterans, wartime veterans, to get uh, additional cash each month and money from the VA to pay for their in-home care. So we're going to show you an application today. All the numbers, what does it take, and we're also going to show you the approval letter to confirm exactly how this veteran received $1,911 $1,911 each month from the VA. With the approval letter, uh, we've blocked out the pertinent information for the veteran, but uh, I'm going to scroll down to the pertinent information. Uh, here we go. Okay, so this veteran received the maximum pension for 2020, which was $1,911. So the importance behind that, that is also, by the way, increased to 1936, which this veteran is receiving now in 2021. This is just the original approval letter. The importance of this is I'm trying to show you that, one, veteran caregivers fights to get you the maximum pension. And there's a lot to this. There's a, there's a lot of calculations as you're going to learn over the next few minutes to determine what the maximum pension rate is. So essentially, quickly, for simplicity, that 1911 minus the maximum pension rate of 1911 minus your income is the amount you receive from the VA, okay? Minus your income, okay? Now, the VA determines the income by how much you get from, let's say, Social Security, which in this case, this gentleman gets $1,325 each month, they will subtract what they call unreimbursed, as you see here, unreimbursed medical expenses. So we allowed, in this case, medical expenses of $18,000 plus. That was basically his in-home care each month that they calculated. So veteran caregivers, we pay for your care up front for you to get this number established. So essentially, we paid for his medical expenses up front and when the VA approves you, the VA will pay us back and pay the fund that the money that we use to help pay you up front. The VA will pay it, pay the veteran, and then the veteran will pay our fund back off at a zero interest. So essentially, what I wanted you to see here are two things from this approval letter. One is that we get everybody the maximum pension rate, and we fight for everybody to get the maximum pension rate. Two that there's a little clause in here. Here's, here's the state. A decrease in the expected medical expenses is a change in income. Again, remember, he's got $1,325 worth of income each month, but he's spending more than that for in-home care each month. So by doing that, it's lowered his income number down to zero. So the VA is now awarding him the full amount. And it's very important, they're saying here, to prevent an overpayment, you would have to repay at some point, immediately report any decrease in these unreimbursed medical expenses. So if he stopped paying for his in-home care, this is clearly telling you that you will lose that portion of the pension. Again, remember, aid and attendance is a cash and care pension, meaning that you get so much cash per month and you get so much in unreimbursed medical expenses which are being reimbursed to you because you have paid for that care up front. So let's go look at the application itself and see how these numbers shake out. In this case a single veteran uh, that would be application as you see here this is a 527 there's a different form for a individual spouse but what we're doing is we're trying to get down to the numbers what did this veteran how did they come up with the 1911 dollars in pension money each month okay so this veteran as i told you before 1325 dollars was his social security payment or is what he receives in income each month now the how much in-home care did he put in each month he put in fourteen hundred and twenty dollars and fifty five cents now why is that number where did that number come from Okay, so the VA has a 5% deductible off of um, the maximum pension rate. So if you take the 1911 in his case times 5%, that comes down to $95. So what we did is we increased his, from his income number, which was 1325 You can see now we added the 5% deductible from the VA. That's a requirement, by the way. And now his in-home care is at 1420 That number is considered a 
unreimbursed medical expense, basically veteran caregivers paid for this care each month on behalf of the veteran, up front for the veteran, and we're reporting that to the VA. So they know, okay, you can see right here, are you or your dependents claiming unreimbursed medical expenses? Yes, we are. And here they are right here. We're clearly communicating that to the VA. I paused the video for just a second to discuss the 5% deductible from the VA. So I am looking at Title 38, Chapter 1, Part 3, which essentially discusses the 5%. So let's go there and take a look at that first and understand what is this 5% thing all about. Okay, guys, we're looking straight here from the Federal Code of Regulations, Title 38, Chapter 1, Part 3. And as you can see here, it's talking about the veteran's income. Again, we're trying to calculate what is the veteran's income. And, and here it reads, unreimbursed medical expenses will be excluded. And essentially what that means is subtracted from your income. They'll be excluded when all of the following requirements are met. And in the third paragraph here, you, this is referring to the 5%. They, they were, in other words, expenses were or will be in excess of the 5% of the applicable maximum annual pension rate, which means... Take your maximum pension rate of 1911 times the 5%. Anything over that is, is applicable. So in this case, with a veteran who has $1,325 worth of income, you essentially have to add the $95, which is 5% of 1911. You add that to it, and that gives you the $1,420 that is a medical expense. That makes everything come to an exact zero, meaning his income minus his medical expenses equals zero income, thus giving him maximum pension. Essentially, the $1,420 changes the veteran's income. Remember, he had $1,325 worth of Social Security each month. Now, the VA sees he has zero income because the VA is subtracting the $1,420 worth of medical expense each month from his $1,325 Remember, there's a consideration of that 5%. So essentially, we know the numbers to make it come down to zero. His $1,325 worth of income is now zero income. Thus, he receives the full pension of 1911 each month from the VA. Now, remember, going back to the approval letter, remember that paragraph that said, if your medical expense ever changes, so here we are at this 1420 If that were to go down, now his income or his VA pension would go down. And that's very important to understand. In fact, what we do is we call this number the FV13 number. So, and why do we call it the FV13 number? And I'm gonna go down through the application here and we're gonna work through and find the FV13 number for you. As you can see, there's a lot here. Um, but here's the FV13 form. Now, what does this form do? This form communicates, as I'm gonna scroll down here for you, in this section right here. If care provider offers assistance in the home of a care recipient or in the home of someone else, fill out this section. Look at that number again, $1,420 is filled out clearly right here showing that in this case, back in August of 2020, he started to receive $1,420 worth of care. That is telling, so we call that the FV13 number. When you hear us call you or you're talk, we're talking to your family and friends, we say, we've got to determine what your FV13 number is. What that does to the VA is now every single month, 100%, the VA is saying, okay, you're spending 1420 worth of care. That is a medical expense that is consistently being spent over and over again. We are going to now reimburse you for that. By the way, at this point, it's an unreimbursed medical expense. It's not been reimbursed yet, so now they're going to reimburse you for that number. And they're going to do that for the life of the application. The reason this is important is because remember when we went back to that approval letter there was one little simple paragraph very confusing if you don't know this what they're saying to you is do not you better communicate any change in this number because guess what if that fourteen hundred twenty dollars went down to zero and you didn't have any home care anymore you decided I'm not, i don't want any home care anymore the va is going to change your pension to just the difference between the maximum amount which is 1911 and and what his social security check was that's all you're going to get is just that in cash so 
The aid and attendance pension is split into two pieces. It is an application for cash. It's an application to get every month to spend however you want to spend that money, which we get for you. But it's also to get you the medical expenses, which you can put in home care in. And by the way, you can use those medical expenses for other things. And we help you with that. We'll help you with getting insurance, fall alert systems, ramps, handicap accessibility. It goes on and on and on. We will help you through all those things throughout the life of your application where there may be some months where you say, you know what, I would, I would like to reduce my in-home care by X amount so I can pay this medical expense off. What we do, our challenge here at Veteran Caregivers is to make sure that we keep everything filed and up to date so that if the VA were to ever ask any questions, we can clearly show them what you're spending the money on via medical expense. At this point, you can see we are clearly reporting that for uh, the monthly charges are for in-home care and that can change and as we can substitute in-home care for other things that you need now moving forward just to finalize the application what I want to show you is the complexity of this pension so again we're finishing up the FV 13 uh, form here there is activities of daily living so our your doctors we contact your doctor we send them these forms we, we evaluate you ourselves first, but we contact your doctors for what's called a history and physical. And that history and physical is basically a report of all of your history with your doctor up to that point. And it essentially helps us to determine what ADLs are necessary or what you need. And we pre-fill out the forms for the doctor and send it to him so that they can review it and determine if we are accurate in our assessment. And then if not, they can make changes to the form but ultimately your doctor has to sign off that you are in need. In this case, you can see here, this individual needs help with dressing and with bathing. And there's a couple other eye ADLs that he needs performed as well. So moving on, this next piece is very important. This is our invoice to uh, the veteran. And essentially what that veteran is doing is he's paying that $1,420. Now, Remember, veteran caregivers in the beginning pays this number on your behalf. In other words, we are paying this invoice off for the veteran. It's kind of like a credit card. We're assigning a loan essentially to that veteran saying, we're going to pay the, the 1420 up front for you. When the VA approves you, which by the way, we have a 100% approval rate. We've never had anybody declined. And so essentially what happens is when the VA approves you, they're going to pay for all the months that we invested during the application process. So let's say it took the VA three months to approve the application. We paid three times this number of 1420. The VA is going to pay you that in what's called a retro check or sometimes it's termed as a back pay check. And they, they pay for all of that care. Plus, by the way, your cash comes in for each one of those months too. So that's sent to your bank account as well. But this invoice simply shows that we put that much care in each month. You can see right here, the service date started this time and ended that time. This is the amount that was paid and that identifies um, the amount, the medical expense amount. So this obviously is a DD-214 that was assigned to that client. Um, here are more forms. This one is related to, ah, this is the actual examination from the doctor's office. So for you guys just to see the complexity of what the doctors are filling out. I'll just scroll through this a little bit and you, you know, quickly read. There's a lot of information that's getting filled out on your behalf that you would have to do on your own if you're trying to fill these forms out. This is the 2680. Again, more medical forms are assigned by the doctors, et cetera. So we'll end with that. At the end of the day, we wanted to show you that the Aid intense pension is complex. There's no doubt about it. It's simplistic from the math. I mean, we know it inside and out, but if this is the very first time you've ever done it, it's confusing. We are your experts in the aid and attendance pension. We're here to help you through this process. We're going to get you maximum pension so that you get your in-home care and you get the cash that you're deserving. Now, the beautiful part about the in-home care is once you do get approved and you're finally moving forward, we can make adjustments to that. We can lower that care a little bit. Let's say all of a sudden you want to fall alert system that's $50 a month, you can now say, you know, I'm going to drop the care just a little bit each month so that I can put an in-home care, you know, a fall alert system into the, into the house. There's all kinds of different things we can do um, to help, you know, utilize those funds to pay for medical expenses. So 
I hope this helps give you some little indication of what uh, we do on your behalf by filling out all these forms, getting it turned in, get the accuracy of the numbers down to the penny so that you get the maximum pension from the VA. God love you guys. Uh, if there's anything we can do for you, please give us a call. Toll free 888-653-1020.